Okay, so there's some people that watch this channel that have a pretty good amount of information uh, about health and wellness, exercise, and it's great to kind of, you know, get the conversation going in that direction. One thing that I've always enjoyed over the years incorporating into my diets and, you know, tacos or fajitas or whatever dish I might make, even just quinoa, um, is a habanero pepper. I enjoy chopping up a habanero pepper and throwing it in whatever I'm eating. And um, I've always craved these. You know, some people, like, crave having a Coke with their burger and fry. Well, to me... Um, Having something like habaneros uh, is like completing a meal, especially when meat's involved and other spices. Uh, so there's a lot of health benefits to the habanero. It helps reduce inflammation. It's good for obesity. Uh, there's something about how it metabolizes the, uh, the fat cells or triggers that process. And without getting into really specific language, um, the overall health benefit, you can read about this online, is that it fights cancer. In particular, that compound that is within not only the habanero pepper, but the jalapeno pepper, the ghost pepper, and other peppers, it's just in a much stronger concentration in the habanero, which is not even the hottest pepper in the world. And I don't believe that I've tried the ghost pepper um, raw by itself, although... I've had many habaneros over the years. First time I tried it, uh, I was working at Fred Meyer, and, you know, people commonly try to get people to, to bite it and, and see what their reaction is if it's someone that thinks that they're uh, man enough. Well, I never really had a problem eating habanero peppers, uh, although it is pretty hot if you just eat it by itself without having bread or without having, you know, something consumed with it. Uh, I've heard that dairy products, chocolate, um, things like bread, cheese, they can all minimize that super hot reaction. But really, you want to cook it. You want to eat it. Uh, you can eat it raw, but you want to eat it with other foods. Incorporate it into your diet. But the health benefits, just to kind of go over some of the basic, basic health benefits that I've read about, although I should probably put together a, a more elaborate report. So I mentioned the fact that it fights obesity and that it fights inflammation. It's also a pain reliever. And what I'm looking more at is, because I'm, I'm really starting to think, like, we know what foods are good for us, for our genetics, and this happens to be one for me. And I also noticed that people that I consider to be completely Caucasian or Anglo-Saxon, they don't seem to like peppers as much as people from, say, the third world, where people have darker skin. Um, that's not always the case. Um, some people really love their peppers. But I've just noticed this trend, um, this pattern, where um, really hot peppers are more prevalent in, in diets and, and in, in dishes outside of the United States and around the world. And, of course, there's, there's a historical aspect to that, too, being that, that there's the bacteria-killing aspects of these hot peppers, which brings me to the area the discussion about the digestive system. And we have internal parasites, many of us do, that are basically fueled by things like sugar and other things that are in the environment and in our diet. Well, things like habanero peppers or uh, caspian, other hot peppers, um, it is very good for the stomach lining and just the whole system. And I'm reading an article here. I really need to prepare something that's a little bit more detailed. Cayenne is great for relieving gas, bloating, and rebuilding the tissues of the stomach. Our stomachs go through a lot of processing, um, a lot of foods. Some of these foods may not be very good. So it, it, it gets its ass kicked every now and again. This is why people go through fasts. And upon looking at fasts to get rid of internal parasites, there are many that recommend the use of the habanero pepper. So it plays a big role in flushing out internal parasites, but the key to any type of detox is to not be fueling those internal parasites even more by eating a bunch of candy bars. And that's exactly what I do. I'm speaking from experience of the things that I shouldn't be doing, the habits I'm trying to break. You know, I, I'm, I'm engaging in more good habits, and all of a sudden I'm realizing that I'm really craving sugar. 
uh, and I've been uh, giving into those cravings and buying candy bars in the last couple of months. So what I'm doing is I'm fueling the very toxins that I should be actually flushing out of my body. And so it's something that I'm aware of. I haven't even gotten into all the benefits of the habanero pepper, but there are other ones like um, the fact that it detoxifies the blood. And I've read about this time and time again, how it's good for the actual blood. Um, but probably one of the most important health benefits of all, I saved the best for last, is that it fights cancer. And there are so many studies. Uh, and again, we're not talking so much about the habanero pepper, but the chemical compound that is in many of these peppers, in cayenne pepper, um, you can find it in the jalapeno pepper. It's just strongest in peppers like the habanero and the ghost pepper. And there are powdered forms that someone can take cayenne without actually having it in their food. Uh, there are capsules. You can go get capsules yourself and, you know, create something to where you eat it with your food, it goes in your stomach, and you're not actually tasting how hot it is. So that's something for people to keep aware of, to be aware of, if they're adverse to peppers. There is a way around the burn. Um, that's all for now. Um, take a look at the health benefits of habaneros if you haven't already. It's a really interesting subject.